Now, I'm the chairman of ISG ENI, so I'm Dr. Raymond Forbes. I work for Huawei Technologies at the moment. Um, a, I will be working for Huawei UK. Oh, there's a clicker. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, if I get this right, it's, that's me. Put a, okay, it lets me go forward in the slides. Okay, so the aim of ISG ENI is, 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 is compatible in its complementary ads. Is doing. So it's working with the other ISGs that we're presenting here. Uh, it's not the biggest ISG, but it's, uh, it's growing, as you will see. So I, I had some information from Diego and Don and people that they would like to be here, but uh, clearly they can't be in two places at the same time. It's not physically possible. So this is the management team. There's myself, there's Haining Wang from China Telecom, there's Fred Fuzilin uh, from Verizon, Farid Fuzilin, uh, Yu Wang from Samsung, and uh, Sylvia Konikinski from Etsy, and Will Du, who's in front of me. And so if I press this button, it should go forward. Let's try and see. Do I need to point it at something? Can I go forward somehow? Yeah. The guy at the, behind the desk is sorting out. That's right. So the aim of this presentation is to talk about the vision and background. Oh, didn't we? Okay, that's fine. It's okay, don't worry. <laughs> as long as it comes back, it's not the worst thing in the world. The problem would be if it doesn't come back. Introduce the status of the ISG on experiential networked intelligence. That's the name of the ISG. ENI stands for experiential, learned from experience. Networked as in kinds of networks, but mainly the telecommunications network at present. But there could be other data networks on the edges of the network. And intelligence, the idea of gathering intelligence from around the network. The network intelligence activities, we started in 2016, and we've worked through 2017, it's now 2018. Um, we will go for a second release in 2019. And the related STOs and industry consortia. So I will give the outline, then Archie will give some in information, more information about the use cases. I will give some of the information on the architecture, and Will will give some information on the uh, uh, POC, the proof of concept that China Telecom is leading. Now, there is another proof of concept that has arrived yet last week from Telecom Italia uh, uh, CEA in France and uh, the University of Madrid, of Carlos III in Madrid. So, is Walter? Yeah. I'm not sure I recognized you straight away. <laughs> okay. So the work program. We've got seven work items uh, that we have been working on. Now, that we have a, there's 11 work items, but uh, seven of them are active at the moment. So ENI01 is the use case document that's rapporteured by Yu Wang. Yu Wang is the rapporteur. Now, that's now ENI008, 001. The first work item was published this year. ENI 007 is the work item for ENI 002. So these are for the revisions of the documents on requirements. That's the requirements document that Haining Wang is the rapporteur for. Now the context aware modeling. Now this is a higher level modeling of the, S, uh, of the, uh, the service level descriptions, the uh, SLAs and stuff. Uh, so it's above the the policy modeling of the, we were hearing about in the first session. And that has been completed. And that's, that's a report. That report will be reflected in the system architecture. So ENI 0010 is the work item number for the terminology document, which Yu, Yu Sheng is the rapporteur for. And we then have a system architecture document, which is 005 which is 005005. And we have 006006, which is the, the proof of concept, POC. POC is the shortening of proof of concept framework. 
which was rapporteured by Luca Pesanda and Mustafa Essa from Vodafone. And we have a definition of networked intelligence categorization, which is a new work item which was created a few weeks ago, which is um, rapporteured by Luca Pesando from Telecom Italia. Now, there is a, a draft, a first draft of that on the, the Etsy server today. And that first draft actually looks fairly complete. <laughs> it's a, you can, yeah. I was looking at that at the weekend. Okay, the business value is we aim to improve the customer experience and we aim to improve the business efficiency and reduce the operating cost for the operator. And we are aim to re improve the way that services work for the customer. So the aim is to use resources efficiently to allow uh, customers to get the most out of their resources and to, if, when need be, use, get more resources. So our aim is to go from manual manage oops, let's go back. So our aim is to go from manual management towards AI management, operational management. So we want to m change the real-time control from manual to artificial intelligence. Now the aim is that we want to improve the efficiency of SDN and NFV. We're not changing NFV and SDN. So we're building on the existing hardware layering, the horizontal layering. Now this was the kind of mishmash of what existed traditionally. So traditionally we have the uh, architectures. Now the current focus is to improve the operator experience, to specify a set of use cases and architecture and requirements, and to assist in decision-making systems to adjust services and resources. I've said some of these things already. And we have a POC review team, which is myself, Sylvia, Michaela Carigiani, uh, Heining Wang, Luca Pesanda, Mustafa, and Antonia. Now, currently we have these members. So the number of members is growing. Now, the more companies are welcome to be members. All Etsy companies can easily, relatively easily join. There's no problem with that. Um, as chairman, I would like active members. The more active members, the better. Uh, I would like more members, of course. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, having just n n names on a piece of paper is, is good to have. Having active members well, can present me with good problems. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind if they disagree. So we identified the requirements to improve experience. We've done that, largely, and we're continuing to do that. We are standardizing how the network experience is measured in the next release next year. So this is this year. This was last year. Enabling a service assurance is what we aim to do in the architecture. And we aim to publish a reference architecture at the end of this year, beginning of next year, at the end of release one. Now, the first re re release of the architecture is likely to be a set of reference points and a set of command level interfaces it's not likely to be down to the API level. We want to move on and reopen the architecture to move to the API level. So we're not yet got to the API level. And clearly, we want to engage with other SDOs. So this was last year. This was, is continuing. This is present and continuing. But I suppose there's a split in the architecture between the reference points and the API level. So now it's a good time to get down to the specific nitty gritty. So these are the use cases. Now, we've gone from 13 use cases to 15 use cases. We've added two more. And a number of POCs are defined. The one that Will will talk about is here. And the Elastic Resource Management Orchestration is here. So some of these POCs are discussed. So I will talk about this. This is a high-level ENI architecture. And the initial thoughts on the architecture. I will give a bit more discussion as to these boxes in a few minutes. And the red interfaces are the interfaces we need to give some definition of here. The internal reference points here, we probably don't end up defining at all. The aim is to define the external interfaces, the interfaces that may have to go to other systems, other vendors, other equipment. The aim is ultimately to use uh, information from other APIs so we want, don't want to you know, define new interfaces. We want to simply you know, harvest data or collect data from existing 
interfaces. Whether we need to define new uh, elements in the APIs to do that, or whether we, I don't think we should try to, we should as much as possible try to reuse what exists. And there's down to the infrastructure. So we're going to collect data from the infrastructure. So as you see from the MAMO uh, example, we are collecting data in the blue lines and we're giving instructions or com ideas. And there are two levels of instructions. There are instructions which are recommendations to the management or to the people to assist their operation of the network. And there are instructions which would be uh, more artificial intelligence related, which will actually command changes in the orchestration. And it's up to the operators whether it's uh, when they switch it over from um, a, a recommendation to a management level. And there are policies which are fed down from above, and these policies are fed into different systems. And certain policies are fed into the systems today, and certain policies will be fed into ENI. Similar level is about MEF. We'll hear more about MEF details this afternoon, but uh, John Strassner, who's in very involved in MEF reference architecture, the life cycle service orchest orchestration architecture, um, again, there's an issue about collecting data from the APIs and giving commands back into the APIs. So where we are is we want to move on from simply automatic scripting towards extracting knowledge and adapting the network. So these are the levels of management. Now, there are level zeros where the complete manual operator... Oops. Press two buttons by accident. Uh, level zero is the top level. Level one is where we start to get a small amount of analysis going in, a little change to the network. There's some analysis. Level two and three may be more comprehensive awareness and adaptation. And up to levels four and five where there may be more changeable and it may be more comprehensive. And this is an, an example of what may be in the report. Now, the report is, uh, in FreeGPP terms, like a study item. Uh, it's moving on to what could be in the next release. So the aim is to develop a categorization report in the next three, five, six months. And that report is largely on the server today, which can be downloaded and viewed by all the Etsy members and the ISG members. Uh, ISG participants have pretty well the same rights as Etsy members. So this is where we are with the work items. We've had a number of sessions. From December 16, we've had various sessions where we met with other joint workshops with SNDIA, SliceNet, a meeting at the Etsy headquarters with Monarch workshop and a CCSA workshop recently. And these are the, there's another tabular form. Now these documents were published. These documents are in the public domain already. These are, again, it's describing the information in a slightly different way. So this is the POC diagram. Now, the main aspect from here is that the POC teams are independent of the committee. So there may be members of the POC teams that have nothing to do with Etsy. There may be other companies in the POC teams which are completely independent of Etsy, and there's no requirement they have to have anything to do with Etsy. There needs to be one or two members of the POC teams which are members of the committee, obviously, to pass information across. It's going to be difficult to get information if they're all not members. Uh, and we have a committee, and there's a review team being set up to accelerate the review, both at the in initial process and at the end process. Now, the real aim is to get contributions and feedback. So the ecosystem is here. We put ENI in the middle, but the ecosystem is that we will talk to FreeGBP. We are going to work with BBF and GSMA. We're working with ITUT, MEF, and TMF. Uh, we're working with CCSA already. And we want to set up a relationship with Linux Foundation, with ONAP, Akimos, and Panda. And we're connecting with these the research bodies. And the, five, the machine learning 5G focus group in the ITU is, has a significant overlap of members. Cooperate with mainstream operators and vendors to do research institutes. Cooperate with SDOs. 
we want to encourage liaisons, and there are internal liaisons with Etsy groups that we want to reinforce. Now, clearly, uh, NFV is one of the big issues. We want to be complementary to NFV. We want to add on to NFV. We're not trying to compete with NFV at all. And clearly, as you'll see from our membership, is the, the leadership of NFV is largely members of this group already. So, yeah. We want to work with uh, NGP, MEC, which is Edge Computing, which Walter is a member of, uh, NTEC, OSM, which is MAMO, and ZSM. We want to position ENI as the home of network intelligence standards of artificial intelligence to bring intelligence together, not to. We want to guide the industry with consensus and evolution of network intelligence. We want to be the border between different categories which are becoming vague and to stop their categories. And we've had these various meetings. And we have, this is just a. System architecture. Now, data ingestion, we want to gather data from around networks, whether they be NFV networks, whether they be legacy networks, whether they be data networks, whether they be 3GPP networks. They're all, uh, I suppose, there is a large overlap. We want to normalize that data. And we have various static functions, which are the cognition, which is the, the rules of artificial intelligence, the the engineering aspects of artificial intelligence and the, the knowledge gathering, the knowledge management, the, the building up of knowledge and the, the awareness of knowledge that's been learned over the past. The active aspects of artificial intelligence. Now, the context awareness is the things like SLAs, time of day, uh, keeping certain users high priority and keeping other users lower priority, keeping, um, say, the, uh, no, certain times of day in certain cities, the traffic management's a major problem. In other times of the day, um, internet traffic may be a bigger issue, so you want to use resources for different things at different times. Situation awareness is the situation that you gather from the network, the situation you learn from the data. Uh, policy management is the, the policy that you want to inject onto this. So if I, this is just showing how the outer loop is the it's closed loop for given policy and long-term optimization, learning from the data, learning from the policy, and building up knowledge, training the network. This, is the tra this can loosely be described as the training phase. And then we have the, uh, the actual real-time phase, the AI guidance, and the policy enforcement using the model-driven. So the, uh, there, is, there are two phases to this. There's the, AI, there's the learning phase, and there's the real-time phase, or the near-real-time phase. By near real time, we're talking about a second or sub-second. We're not talking about the traditional telecommunications real time concept of several seconds. So we're, we're basing a lot of our work on FOCAL, which was described in the early days of artificial intelligence. And you see in this diagram, there are two loops. There's an inner loop and an outer loop. There's an outer loop of actually learning. And there's an inner loop of actually controlling the resources. So that's the diagram you've seen before. And this is the same as what I've said in many of the words. Let me say, say some. The network categorization, we've, again, you've seen this before. So this is my details, because I don't have a business card as such, but thank you. <laughs>